All right, tonight we're in chapter 10. We got about halfway through reading the, uh, the textbook section. And if I'm not mistaken, we stopped just at the end of, well, we didn't get into the square of stops. Is that? Uh, is that yeah, no, we didn't get that far. We did not. Um, did, we, did we? I think we looked at, the, did we look at the okay, characteristics did, of third declension nouns at the table? Did we go through the table yet? We went through the I remember paradigm. We this table here. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's the one and we're trying to we memorize. Stop. Yeah. Okay. So. We're going to be memorizing the top half of that uh, case ending chart. Uh, I suggested not reading through all the footnotes because you need to take that slowly. But as you're memorizing, you can uh, get into that. So then we're. We're going to start tonight at 10.15. All right. Okay. Uh, this talks about gender. The gender of third declension words can be difficult to determine because of the because the inflectional patterns are not as distinct as those in the first and second declensions. Therefore, you must memorize the gender of every word. That's the key. Well, what I did in my book, uh, maybe I haven't done it in this newer edition, but there's a section in the appendix that talks about uh, third declension nouns. It's all on page 424. And I looked up every one of these to find that he didn't uh, include the article with it. So you can't tell what gender <laughs> these words are. So I looked them all up and wrote down not only the form of the article, the gender of the article, but the meaning of the word too. And that's helpful. These are the various patterns and sub patterns of all the third declension nouns. So as we learn more third declension nouns, we'll probably be looking at this page in the appendix. Are, are, these, are, are these patterns different than the rules he's taught us? Uh, or just example, exemplary. Well, Starks, words. for instance, is one of the words that we learned. And that's yeah. probably the easiest one to learn. And it seems to follow that rule. Yeah. But now each one of these other patterns are very similar, but maybe not identical. Um, so we'll have to study each one. Uh, but... He's presenting it a so, little bit at a time, and as we get to newer ones, he'll, he'll point it out. Carl, um, that halfway down, there's an N on that page, an N3E1, I think it's... Okay. Ixus? Yeah, Ixus. Ixus. That, that's ending in a... That seems to be ending in uh, Upsilon. Upsilon. It seems to be, yes. But um, um, I can't remember that one. The uh, uh, there's some weird things that happen. And is it not? I mean, is it not actually? And I mean, there's some. It's um, it's like it seems to be following the rules of third declension, even though it ends in epsilon. Is that right? Maybe accurate. But there may be a hidden uh, consonant that doesn't. It never shows up. Well, it <laughs> it combines with something and it disappears. Remember. Yeah. He was talking about the, well, no, we haven't got to the square of stops yet, but. Well, I mean, the vocative singular, which we haven't even talked about. Right. Ends in upsilon. If we go too far yeah, ahead of where we're okay. learning, just, then we're going to get a So the here. answer, I'm just looking at, I'm just trying to understand what's represented because this seems to follow all of the rules for third declension and that one. Well, not, not all quite, of, because yeah. it's like there's there's slight variations. Well, no, I don't, what's the variation? I mean, things are new. Yeah, they're not this. So the, the rules are not all the rules. Well, if we <laughs> learn the rules that he wants us so to learn, then we'll learn the variations as they. Well, there's a lots of uh, exceptions. 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 Yeah. So yeah. there's complicated rules and lots of exceptions. Yeah. He doesn't like yeah. to use the word exceptions. He wants us to. Um, be convinced that uh, 
every, pretty much everything follows a rule and it's not an exception, but you have to learn the rules for uh, why they. Yeah, I've noticed that he, he, he doesn't like to think anything's an exception. He would rather make a rule that's 100 pages long than to remember 10 exceptions. But I, yeah. I can understand where right. that comes from because this is something I thought I had a good phonetics class when I was in elementary school. Mm -hmm. My son had a way better one in phonetics school. He was in Nebraska. And one of the, and this was, of course, related to English, but I've seen the pattern repeat in other languages. And what it is, is that essentially anytime something seems to be an exception, it's generally because the word was imported into that language, yeah. some other language, and it's following a rule in the other language. Yeah, if there's some other the rule. original language. So what's called exception generally does follow a rule. It's just a foreign rule. And so if you understand that that's what it is, it's right. a foreign rule, then it's, you can recognize the pattern. Sure. You can learn a mountain of information or learn the exception. Yeah. And if, if you're a linguist and you know all of those things, like the verb to be in English, it's certainly not going to follow any single rule. And might, it yeah. might not even follow two mm -hmm. because it's a conglomeration of multiple languages over right. a thousand years. Yeah. And that verb so, is so, so irregular I, I, in every language. That's true. I, I, at some point, it's sort of meaningless to worry about all the rules. You come to the point of just language. practically trying to recognize things. Which I think is kind of what you're saying is we're not really linguists. We're just trying to learn Greek. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but his point is right. very important that for third declension nouns, especially, we need to learn the, the article along with it to know mm -hmm. what gender it is. There are, however, a few patterns in this chapter you will meet stems ending in mot. For example, on, anima, anamatas, ta. All mot stems are neuter. So that's a hard and fast rule right there. Okay. And he'll give us a few um, hard and fast rules that don't have any exceptions. Okay, 1016, the article becomes ex especially important now. Even though a noun itself changes its form, the article always remains the same. To with an iota subscript will always be to, whether the noun it modifies is first, second, or third declension. Most nouns are modified by the article, which makes it easy to determine the noun's gender. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why when I parse thing, parse nouns on my uh, exercises, I, I put the parsing over the. Uh, article rather than the noun. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because the article is a surefire way to determine what case and gender it is. I have a question about the table before we get Which too table past now? it. The one on page 101, the big table. Oh, okay. Um, on the accusative singular masculine slash feminine yes. case, is that is that is that alpha slash new indicating that alpha is for masculine and new is for feminine? No, no. It what means, is it saying? There are certain words that for the masculine and feminine will have an alpha as the case ending. Other words, both masculine and feminine, will have a new ending. And I was trying to figure okay. out before you got here. I know a lot of words that have an alpha. Uh, that's fine ending, but i can't it, it's okay it's that the nomenclature is is very confusing and i yeah. realized looking at him saying wait a minute yeah. is he trying to explain that the same symbol used for masculine slash feminine is conveying two different genders here yeah, I, I wasn't was sure it's a good question the conclusion that had he been trying to say that <clears throat> alpha only applied to masculine and do only the feminine he would have taken the space to create a third column and duplicated the well, would you the actually other cases. do that? He, he's not consistent on how he does these things. That's why I asked. I mean, yeah, I there's don't... a little bit of it's okay. Now yes. we know. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I remember uh, he made a statement earlier, and I think it was in chapter six. The article is our friend. Yes. Do you remember him saying I that? I remember that. I don't yeah. remember where, but I remember him well, saying that. That's because the article is a one um, 
Constant. Constant, one definite thing. Constant. Yeah, constant. Yeah. I, I, I had a, another question on that same table. I'm okay, sorry. Sure. I was Let's looking go at, back to it. I'm sorry, but in the endings, in the chart with the endings, um, and I see, I think I figured out what this is, but so on the the bottom half, he shows that's supposed to be the chart that includes vowels that go. Yeah, along the with connecting it. vowel with the case right. ending. But now, in a word that has no connecting vowel, it seems odd that he puts. Where is it? My question. I'm sorry. Now I've lost it. On the third, on the nominative singular masculine feminine. Why is there a dash there? On the nominative singular masculine slash feminine. Why is it sigma and dash? What is that trying to convey? That's a good question that I don't have a no, ready answer thing. for. Well, I, I don't know. Why would that be? I mean, that doesn't ma match the table above, which says there's always a case ending. I'm like, well, I, yeah. yeah. What I mean, we need to see is. Oh, some, is, is I would it, say the reason for that would be that under nominative singular, where he's showing the connecting vowel, he's saying that if there is, that if it is masculine, I think this is what he's saying, that if it, it's masculine, it has a sigma, but if it's feminine, then no. Like, oh, yeah, he doesn't what? have a slash like he does on the what? top thing. This, this should be words that, no, okay, now, maybe it's right. because there's words. Be saying it should be I, more better explained. Um, I, I don't know what it means, but in the, all the things he's introduced, there will be no difference because they all end in a consonant. There isn't a vowel. Mm -hmm. But now if we go back to that other page, now, is he showing us something here that applies to information he hasn't taught us yet at all and hasn't explained it? So we're at that page 424. <clears throat> and for example, that ix, ixos, ixu, I don't even know what gender that is, but if we looked at the uh, so this was the nominative singular. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not. This isn't making sense. I mean, so that wouldn't. This means this would be a masculine as opposed to a feminine because it ends in sigma, and if it was feminine, it wouldn't. I, I can't I, answer I that know. without looking at. This. Whole lot of stuff, and I'd rather not spend yeah. the time to. Yeah. Uh, okay, to do that but maybe right it's now. a note to make. Yeah. That if you're going Once to send I... Bill Mounts a notice, we don't know what the table means there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have a ready answer for that. <laughs> well, else that's okay. <laughs> Ixu. Ixus, yeah, that's Ixus. the word for fish. I, I actually kind of thought that's what it was. I know what this is, but I'm not sure I know. Okay, I'm sorry, Carl. Right. I just I look at things. I, if I don't ask, then I'm not doing yeah, my job. It's okay, a thanks. good question. I just don't have a ready answer. All right, that's fine. Uh, now the square of stops. I think you'll find this interesting. A stop is a consonant whose sound is formed by slowing down or completely stopping the flow of air through the mouth. Okay. Stops are broken down into three classifications. Labials, that means the lips. These three consonants, P, beta, and phi, are formed by using the lips to impede the airflow momentarily. Try and say a P without letting your lips touch. You can't. Uh, velar, which means the palate. Uh, papa, gamma, and key are formed by pushing up the middle of the tongue against the soft part of the roof of the mouth. That's the palate. So can you feel your tongue pressing up when you form a and ga and k sound? And then dental. The tau, delta, and theta are formed by clicking the tongue against the back of the teeth. Footnote 10. Actually, it's not the teeth, but the alveolar ridge behind the teeth that's used. But the word teeth is easier for most to associate with dental. 
Uh, have you come across that before? Oh, yeah, they found it this extensively in PLI. And I've also taught this thing, I think, to other people. And one of the things in particular is dental consonants are extremely difficult for Latin American native Spanish speakers to reproduce because they do not have, well, this way, when they have letters in their alphabet that would that would be dental consonants, they tend to swallow them and not pronounce them. Mm -hmm. And they have no sound. Mm. So, I mean, literally when I'm trying to teach them to produce anything in English that has a in it, I tell them to stick their tongue in between their teeth and bite it as they make the sound. Because <laughs> that's yeah. about the only way they can do it. Mm -hmm. They call me Mr. Thomas. Thomas. So they have that sound. Well, European Spaniards do. Not I, I was talking to a guy on the phone in Mexico yesterday, and he said, Thomas. He obviously then learned his Spanish in Europe okay. or, or studied over there. So how would they China. say that? Because, because Latin Americans, they typically either um, omit the consonant sound all together and it would come out something like onyx, or they substitute a different sound for the like as a possibility. So they have the T sound, but not the TH yeah, sound. Yeah, but they don't like to do it. If they did the T, the, the T, they would not do it as distinctly as I did. It would almost disappear. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Weird. So rule seven, square of stops. Um, this is a seventh of the eight noun rules is the chart. Be sure and memorize it exactly. Not only should you be able to repeat it left to right, but also top to bottom. It's, uh, we'll study it a little bit right now and we'll see uh, some patterns in it. Um, top of the next page, um, P, Kappa, and Tau are unvoiced. P is the uh, labial unvoiced. See now, the headings of the columns in that chart, uh, the unvoiced ones are what he's talking about now. Uh, that talking about not the name of the uh, consonant, but the, the sound of the consonant. Try making these sounds. Uh, and and those are unvoiced because you don't use your voice box to produce them. You yes. just use your tongue. Um, and then the, the next bullet point, beta, gamma, and delta are voiced because the voice box is used. Place your fingers on your voice box and pronounce these letters. You'll feel it vibrate when you say the voice stops. So, ba, g, and d. Um, you can feel it. The tongue does the same thing, but you got the voice box in involved. And the final column of stops, phi, ki, and theta, technically are not stops, but aspirates. Um, you see S-P-I-R, sp spirate, uh, that, that has the breath flowing. The, air, the airflow is only slowed down. However, because they fit into the pattern, it's easier to view them as stops. The rough breathing is also an aspirate. And remember, the rough breathing has the H sound. Ah, ah. Um, so, B, you, you have the uh, lips pressed together, but you have air flowing. It's not stopped. B, and key has the tongue pressing against the palate, but you're letting air go through key and th, uh, that's got the tongue against the teeth, but it's letting air flow through. Does it make sense to you? Yeah. No. The chart is important because the stops behave in a consistent manner. Whatever happens to a stem ending in tau 
also happens to a stem ending in delta because tau and delta are both dentals. If you learn the chart, you will often be able to predict what's going to happen. This is much easier than memorizing different paradigms. This same square of stops will also be important when we study verbs. So a little time spent here saves hours of frustration later. Then one other feature about this, uh, you have a sigma combining with any one of these stops and it forms a different letter. When it, Whenever a stop and a sigma come into contact, the results are predictable. Learn these changes well because you'll encounter them often. So a labial, for instance, P plus a sigma forms C. Well, we, we're familiar with that idea. Um, a kappa plus a sigma forms C. And you can hear it. Uh, K, K and S together is K. transposing the, the transliteration into what the sound is. That's right. And then the dental, for instance, tau plus sigma. Now this, this is a different thing. Uh, the tau plus a sigma, excuse me, the dental plus a sigma, uh, the dental just drops out and all you've got is a sigma left. Yeah, which just all goes back to one of the earliest things that they taught us in every DLI course I took, which is just that the written language is a secondary form of the language, which is an attempt to reproduce in a permanent form transmittable to other persons what the spoken sound mm -hmm. sounds like. Yeah. And this is directly doing that. So an example, these three examples, the SARC, you've got the kappa, which is a, uh, a palatal, uh, um, a velar or palatal, plus a sigma, SARCs. Now we, we saw that when we were studying the paradigm. And then scallop, that's a um, labial or a, the lips form that plus a sigma forms a psi. By the way, a scallops um, means a thorn or a stake, a, sh a sharp instrument. And then uh, onomat, that's a stem of onoma, um, that's a dental plus the sigma, the uh, Tau just drops out. Footnote 12 says, oh, I don't like the, his explanation here, but he says technically the dental forms a sigma and the double sigma simplifies to a simple single sigma. Uh, <laughs> I prefer to think of it as the tau just drops out. Uh, okay, that's... Um, his explanation of the split of stops. I think it's a kind of a neat, uh, compact uh, explanation. And then rule eight, the last one of the noun rules, a tau cannot stand at the end of a word and will drop off. For example, the stem of the word or name is on a mock. No case ending is used in the nominative singular. And the final tau drops off. Anamat plus nothing it leaves the tau at the end, and they don't like that sound, so they just drop it. This is the final rule for case endings. You know all eight. They're listed in the appendix, page 423. Okay. <clears throat> now we've got another. Okay. Ask a question, sure, or make an observation. Question. All right. Um, somewhere, I think I read, or 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 believed because of what I read. Yes, because he shows in ten point ten that a new stem, um, that it new stems become sigma. Um, he shows this in, um, now. 
So, like, because for example, the new drops out uh, before a sigma. <laughs> okay, yes. The new drops out before a sigma, but it's following. Um, It's, it's, it's following the same sort of rules that we have in the stops here. Mm -hmm. But he nowhere does he show this in his noun rules. And, no, and, that's and because a new is not uh, one of these. Well, I, I understand it's not. He's got these rules. Is it a rule or not that, that things that end in new will follow this pattern that the new drops out before sigma? Is well, that true? Uh, it does for a different reason, probably. Well, okay. Both a new but, and but Carl, a it doesn't though. matter to yeah. me what I mean. I'm not I'm not wanting to learn all the dynamics of how the human palate works. Yeah. When we encounter this, we're going to have the new drop out, but he doesn't make a rule out of that, but it is a rule. Yeah. So like in my card to keep track of this is what I mean about it'd be nice to have something that actually had all the stuff in one place. <laughs> I'm making that one of my rules because then I can recognize it and know it. He gave us other these other forms over here. On 10.2, he talks about the K stem. Well then he 10.2. 10.10. 10.10. 10. Then he, he bought, goes to the trouble of telling us about the K stem and the Mott stem. But do, but but later on he explains he explains everything we need to know in this rule. But he doesn't give us a rule for new, although he had introduced it as a, I don't know what, a hint or whatever he calls 10.10. Mm -hmm. It's actually a rule. It's, it's one of the footnotes, uh, footnote three. Yeah, yes. I, I, <laughs> yeah, but you'd like it all in one place. Well, you know what? The, the three pages of explanation, maybe it's helpful, but in a concise, what am I looking for to understand when I'm trying to look something up and read it? I didn't, I want a concise picture of what's really, what I'm expecting. I'd kind of like something like And that. new plus sigma becomes sigma. Yeah. Right, that's a rule. Well, it just drops out, yeah, <laughs> well. it is. Yeah. And we're gonna encounter that with verbs as well. Yeah, and so I'm trying to, I'm just making sure that really is a rule. Yeah, that, it is. That we can expect that. You can. In fact, you can underline it or circle. Yeah, I wrote it in my book right here. Yeah, and I just make sure I'm not lying. <laughs> it's, it's a good rule to remember. Oh. Uh, but as far as new goes, when we study verbs, there are going to be four consonants that are classified as uh, liquids. Okay. Uh, new, mu, and new, and lambda and rho are all classified as liquids. Uh, and they have certain thing, rules that apply to them too, uh, that are different from other consonants. Okay. But we'll have to wait till we get to verbs to learn about that. Okay, so it'll be another more complete yeah. uh, description of what we do with mu and nu. Yeah. Okay, um, Where you told us, but I don't remember reading it, that all nouns that end with mot are neuter. He just, uh, where did I miss just, it? Okay. Yeah, 10.15, uh, the second paragraph. All mot stems are neuter. Ah, there it is. Oh, yeah, okay. it is a little. You might want to circle that. Yeah, yeah I'm like, underline. that's, you know, maybe that's worth having a. Yeah. <laughs> in the rules. Well, what you, <laughs> so, why, don't I mean, you, why don't you find all these I'm rules that you like and put them? Well, Put them on a, a okay. Look, I'm a I, I I I spent 30 years writing software code. Okay. And I I I never after I learned my first language or two, I never wanted to go pick up a textbook and go through it again. I wanted everything, and so I would look for concise notes about the rules of the language. That's the more logical and concise that I could just follow is what I wanted. So yes, you know, I'm kind of like I'm looking at these and Make it's your like, own little I'm working. I, I am. I am. I'm kind of trying to work on it. Because for someone trying to look up what these words are and understand what happened, do we just need the cliff notes? We don't, yeah. <laughs> it's good to go I, through I the reason, but we need the cliff notes yeah. afterward. Yeah, I think that's you, very did you valuable. find that with yeah, well, other languages? Like whenever I'm doing all of these things while well, I, I work through here and 
I use this. I actually end up using this primarily for the lexicon in the back. And when I'm trying to study right. to parse a word and figure it out, I end up going to this. Right, because it's because it. it's it's, all it's concise. Yeah, yeah. I made flashcards, but that's easy to read. It's easier to read. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Carl. I'm, yeah, but I don't really I know. You know, is is it not a rule, or is I mean, I'm not because it's hard to know why. In, some information was like bolded and others not. It's kind of in a one well, sentence. To, if you skipped over, it's hard to find again. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's just that there's so much in here that if you're trying to go through all these pages, it's like. And I try to, I actually try to go through and put these on my flashcards, and I missed that one. That's why. <laughs> Where right. was it? It's like that, I, I remember hearing some line along that, but what exactly was it? In which chapter? Yeah. How many months ago did the first year that it occurred for the fourteenth time? Well, it, it, it is. I mean, it's, it's hard to do both, is, you know. It's less so that it takes yeah. less time to yeah. find it on. No, I mean, this is all good background information. I, so when you get all these little hints, or are we, then you're going to it, have such a long thing, it's going to be hard to find your way well, around honestly, that. Honestly, you know, I, there there is so much of this, and I have a feeling the reason no one created it before is to do so. I, I think it's going to turn out looking like something like the sort of Task that my commanders used to always give me back when I was. No, yes, there's no nice way to make it. Which always boiled down to something on the order of explain to me the history of the world on one eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. <laughs> yeah. No, it wouldn't be a short thing, but to <laughs> kind of have them all where you could scan them. I don't know. I don't know how useful it is to look it up. I, you know, he's hit the high points. Uh, that's fine. I do have a question too about now okay. that I like the stops because. It's actually rather intuitive without all the explanation to look at this and see that Kappa Gamma, Kappa Gamma and, and, um, and Chi all go to Xi. That kind of makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. And the others, may they do, they kind of follow. I mean, mm -hmm. our own pronunciations almost work that way. I mean, it, yeah, that, that, that's very logical. But my question is about the other thing. Are we somewhere going to need to know how these are expressed as to unvoiced, voiced, or aspirated? Is this like something somehow deep? We're going to have to know this somewhere? No, I think that's intuitive also. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if it helps you to use those. No, no, no. I, I didn't know if it's like, because later on in the, in the notes, he never mentions it again, like in his appendix and in this uh, short this short thing here, it's not that none of that's described again. And, and yet it was in his thing here. And I didn't know if it was because he made, he talked about it a lot. And yet it ends up not being something. You know, it's in the later information. OK. OK, 10.22 pos. Uh, this word is a 313 adjective, footnote 13. 313 means that the masculine and neuter follow the third declension, while the feminine follows the first declension. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> it it well, gets better. It gets better. Yeah. Um, so back to the 10.22. Uh, um, it's often used as a paradigmatic word for the third declension. The stem of this word is pont. P alpha nu tau, which in the feminine is altered to pasa. Footnote 14 says, uh, I don't know whether we want to read the, he's talking about you who are interested in advanced morphology. <laughs> well, sometimes these kind of explanations leave me more confused than if I didn't read it, but a constant uh, mental I owe it. Okay. okay. There okay. That's why I couldn't answer. There are two letters, maybe even more than two, which dropped out of use before the Koine period. Sure. One of those is a consonantal iota, the other is a digamma. What kind of a sound would that make? Well, it's a semi-consonant. Uh, <laughs> uh we probably don't, don't know want, what kind of sound. I don't made. want to get bogged down in trying to explain <laughs> it here, but those letters disappeared yeah. from the alphabet. <laughs> but, <laughs> but their influence is still felt. 
Oh, that's I know. Okay. And this is why uh, <laughs> something I don't know. No, All right. We're oh taking for this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Armed with this knowledge and the rules in this chapter, you should be able to write out the entire paradigm for this word without looking below. <laughs> well, I can't do it. <laughs> Try it. If you can, you're doing well. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. That sounds like the, that was easy, right? That way it wasn't. <laughs> okay. Let's go through this one uh, vertically. Wait a minute. No, I think he wants us to I mean, do it horizontally. Um, <laughs> just remember the stem of this word is pot with the new towel. At the sure. end. And the reason you know that is be, look at the genitive, pontos. You drop the omicron sigma and you're left with pont. Okay. But now, okay. Pos is a num to singular masculine. Sure. Footnote 15 says the new tau drops out before the sigma. Is this always true of new tau? Yes, it's a uh, new <laughs> new and tau both so if they're together, individually they're both or together they drop out. Actually, that's really state. logical. If the tau yes. drops, the oh, new okay. has to drop. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's you extra. drop them one at a time, and they both drop. They both drop. Yeah. <laughs> so, pos. Yes, pos. So the new tau um, before the sigma of the case ending for nom to singular, they dropped out, and you're left with. Just pos. But then it uh, goes back to new tau again, the dative and the accusative and everything except the dative plural, because there again, you have the sigma touching that new tau. This is okay. So, how do you get pos on? That's a first. Remember, the feminine follows first declension pattern. Well, not, okay. Not third declension. But why isn't it? Okay. okay. Why, isn't I, no, it just, why isn't it just pa? Wow. I mean, pa, you mean because it, wouldn't it be yeah. pont and then you have no ending and therefore you drop the new in the tau and you just have pa. Uh, I'm just, just being dumb. I'm sorry. Dominant and singular feminine should have no case ending if it's first declension. Um, he's, he explains <laughs> it. Just a minute. He explains it in footnote 14. Which, let me just read through it. Um, it's, it's altered because a consonantal iota, and he refers to a future chapter 20.24, was added to form the feminine stem, and new tau plus a consonantal iota forms sigma alpha. So all you need to do is remember that, why don't you just remember yeah. that sigma alpha, the pasa is the stem for for the feminine. For the if feminine. We were English, English, our teachers would have told us this was an exception to the rule. They wouldn't have told us that there was a. Because we'll never remember English. all the other stuff and we'll just kind of shake our heads yeah. and be frustrated anyway. Because yeah. <laughs> we're not that smart. But you you notice when you look down the column of yeah. feminine, that follows it does. just exactly the first declension. It does. If we, th if we think of it just as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Pasa. That works. So. Yeah. Remember pont okay. and the wow. new tau drops out. But now look at the neuter column. Uh, yeah. Footnote 16 says there's no case ending. So it's not a sigma that touches the new tau. It's just a, a, a hyphen, uh, no so, case ending. Uh, so, the, okay. I don't want to ask, but I'm, I'm going to ask something that's just so stupid to ask, but I want to ask. It has a footnote. And T tau cannot stand by itself, so it drops so off. So it drops off because the rule for tau, it can't, can't be. But a new thing. can okay. stand. Yeah. At the new end. can stand. It just can't have an S after it. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> it does. Keep it does. That, yeah. That follows the rule for the mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, for, that works. Okay. Good. Yep. Okay. All right. And the yeah. rest of it, I think you can understand. Well. Yes, we do. This is a paradigm that's going to be very important later on. And this is a good one to memorize. I know you don't like to memorize a lot of things, but 
when we get to uh, participles later on, chapter 24, I think. Uh, and participles are going to be very important. And you'll have enough under your belt by that time that. Uh, well, what is it we're trying to understand by memory? I mean, this is one word, pasa. Yeah, but and, the, and this pattern is the basis for. Uh, the 313 pattern? Or the fact yeah, that we changed the stem to possible. Both of those things. Um, okay. Okay. So we're going to have things ending in. I'm. But uh, uh, just I, 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 take you know, his I'm, word yeah, for it or my well, word for it. Well, I, it'll it'll be it'll come up later on. Yeah, my brain and doesn't memorize things. I tell, you, tell you what, I won't ask you to so, memorize it, but I'm, just remember where it is, and that this sure. is the paradigmatical for paradigmatic word it, it's important for i'm sorry for what for it, it it's the basis for for, for uh, participles, participles which we've been given a bunch of right no we haven't studied participles but those in the present tense the participle is the word ending with ing so in greek are they ending in new tau um the the endings of these words no i mean used. those no uh, in greek are we expecting participles to have a lot of participles to have a root that ends in new tau no not necessarily but the endings are what what you use um the 313 pattern yes mm -hmm. Well, see, I don't need to memorize this to know the 313 pattern I, the thing that's strange about this is that we did this thing to the feminine form and there's this sort of bizarre explanation mm -hmm. and I'm sure it's yeah, really, yeah, really yeah, great. Yeah, but yeah. what I, you know, the thing I'm gonna have to look at this, the thing I wanna remember is, yeah, there's a 313 pattern. That's not hard to memorize. And then I go, and if something ends in new tau, yeah, it actually becomes sigma alpha. Okay. That, I mean, that that's like something I, I will better remember and hang okay. on to if that's what the important facts in here are, because we, I mean, uh, what he said is true. We should be able to duplicate the fact that we know how to fir do first and second and third declensions mm -hmm. in these genders, if we know the patterns and we know the right. rules. Yeah. I, I'm, I mean, I'm good with that. Okay. Right. Uh, Let's right. leave it at sure. that then. Okay. Just, All right. And hopefully this is a quick answer and if not, forget it, but is the consonant leota sort of like the reverse concept of the fact that in English, Y can sometimes function as a vowel if there's no other vowel around? Is this like I know what you're saying? The yeah. leota functions kind of like a consonant if there's no other consonant around. That's a close approximation. Okay. Yes. So um, and with that much, then we'll know. Okay, that's something to follow. Y in. is a semi-vowel. Yeah. 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 But it's a semi constant because you've got words like yes okay. and year and you. So long but, ago, when before when there was still a city called Troy, Iota could function as a consonant. Yeah. There weren't any consonants around, and it doesn't do that anymore. But okay, but there's still effects from it. Yeah, vacation. that's an approximation. Okay, well, that's a good explanation. Okay. Yeah, and I figured that's enough for us to know for tonight. Mm -hmm. Leave it like that. Okay, yeah, thank you, Ray. That's actually kind of helpful. <laughs> okay, um, 1023. Because pos is an adjective, it can function substantively. When it does, it may require an additional word like people or things. Well, we're used to that um, when you've got a substantival adjective. But unlike other adjectives, pos usually is in the predicate position when modifying a noun. Uh, I think we saw that before uh, with other words. So they're in the predicate position, uh, but you don't um, supply the word is like you do with a noun. So, so what does it mean? I'm sorry. The, you me pos? remember what the predicate position is, don't you? No, no I'm, I'm, what does the word pos mean? I'm sorry. What is it means the, every or all. Okay, I'm sorry. Each, I'm just looking. each or every if it's singular and all when it's plural. I'm like, I, well, I'm, I guess I should have done this already in my vocabulary. Remember the word pantheism? Sure. Uh, I'm that just... means all 
uh, all gods. I guess in the next sentence, uh, he has pas ho um, anthro, mm -hmm. anthro, anthro, oh. Anthropos oh. means oh. every man. Okay. Yeah. So therefore, yeah, I should know that it means every. Beyond would okay. be the place of all the gods. Yeah. The yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah. Or you've got Pan American. It's all, yeah. all the Americans. I'm just thinking more Greek words. But Pan Pan like Panoply. 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 Panoply is uh, Pan is each or every or all, and Hopla is weapon. All weapons. Ah, yeah, because you had hoplites. Mm -hmm. Oh, hoplites. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, 1024. He's listing the four different uh, pattern uh, categories of adjectives. The 212 adjective like agathos. Uh, 313 pattern like pos. A 2-2 two -two pattern like Ionios, and a 3-3 three -three pattern like Tis or T. So, so now these <laughs> patterns that he's describing here, these are peculiar to his classification of it. Nobody else uses them, right? Yeah, the, the two and yeah, the three different um, um mm -hmm. Like the two one two three one three two two three. These are just his. No, it's not right just now, his. Or other All gram that. yeah. Every grammarian uses uh, those three numbers uh, okay. for the different um, par um, not paradigm uh, categorizations. So these yeah. declensions are declensions the everybody right. uses. Yes. And then these patterns would fit. Yeah, no, yeah. What yeah. is yeah. peculiar to mounts? Is his sub patterns. Okay. Yeah. So if we were to describe a, an okay. adjective as a 212 adjective, other people who didn't study mm -hmm. mounts would know what we're talking yes. about. Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. Yeah, that's good to know. I, um, it's, this is, I'm sorry, this is kind of a, a nit, but Tiss and T mm -hmm. are, are in, in, interrogative pronouns. Well, that, so, I mean, with an accent, it's an interrogative pronoun. Without an accident. Okay. Am I, accent. am I looking at that? Doesn't that have an accent? Uh, okay. Look back to the paradigms on page 899. Yes. Uh, it's only the uh, lexical form where you don't have the accent. What? What am I? Look on page 99. I, See, this so is the interrogative. The lexical form has an accent for tis okay. and t. And that's the interrogative pronoun. Yeah. But the lexical form that does not have an accent okay. is the indefinite. So I'm looking pronoun. on 1024, and this has an accent. So doesn't that the interrogative pronoun? Yes, it is. Well, I'm only asking because he's giving examples uh, for. Okay. But uh, he could have just as well Adjectives. said kiss or tea without an accent is also a 3-3 three, three pattern. But, okay, he's just showing the pattern. My only nit was he's not using an adjective. How is that an adjective? Um, pronouns and adjectives are so similar uh, that they're, they're classified together. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, I, well think, think about it. Um, it is a modifier. Not necessarily. Yes. Yeah. He is not an adjective. Well, no. No. Um, just a minute. Uh, Who than, is not an adjective? To, to, the, to the fact that, that when you use he, you're indicating this male as opposed to that male. Yeah, okay, but that, you know, now you're... Okay. So it, it is modifying which that, male. No, then it, if I said that... Male. Okay, that would be an adjective. Granted, an adjective is not a pronoun. Okay, but they are so closely associated that they're listed together. For instance, in the appendix, page four twenty six, you've got adjectives slash pronouns because they follow the same pattern, inflectional patterns. Inflectional four twenty six. Page 426, yeah. adjectives and pronouns. They're okay. inflectional patterns. Is that different than these categories? You could call it categories, yeah. 
<laughs> I don't want to call it anything. I just want to know what it is. <laughs> Are these categories that we just learned on, on, on in this chapter the oh, same you're as about the three one three? Yeah, three, one, three. the three one is that okay. the same thing as inflectional patterns? Um, yes. So what I the paradigms for adjectives and pronouns are. If you have a 313 adjective and a 313 pronoun. So we should expect pronouns to also follow these They behave patterns. the same way. That we, we could, we'd expect pronouns to have patterns like this. Yes, too. yes. Okay. So this is like, sometimes I, I've asked, I've wondered in my mind, if, if Bill Mounts puts into these things, these little nuggets, wondering if someone will ask the question so he can answer it. I, so this isn't just for adjectives. It's also for pronouns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, where were we? Excellent. Thank you. I'm sorry to. I'm uh, glad I asked. Two okay. more sections here. <laughs> Article 1025. There are two special situations concerning the translation of the article. The Greek article in the article in Greek is much more than just the word the. It is a weak demonstrative. Now remember, demonstrative pronoun is this or that, um, this being the near demonstrative, that being far demonstrative. But the article can actually approximate mm -hmm, a demonstrative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In fact, in the history of the language, as the language was developing from its uh, primitive roots, the demonstrative used to be used as the article and then they had a separate word that uh, that became the article the so, meaning there were well you say the demonstrative there's yeah. more than one demonstrative well okay either one of the so, the, the near or far demonstrative this or that you're saying yeah. for instance okay. uh, if i wanted to talk about this book you can think of it as a, a finger pointing right. this book or that book uh, all right and, that, and that's specifically like that. what you mean in this for right. demonstrative yeah. and he says or a relative like who yeah it it can also or which. yeah it can okay. also function like a relative pronoun or a personal or a personal pronoun he she or it or one depending on the needs of the context you'll usually have to add a word to your translation to help such as who or which those are relative pronouns let the context determine which is appropriate. When you find the phrase ha de, the article is usually functioning as a personal pronoun, but he. Here's an example. Okay. Ha de apiso, apiso, mu, or kamenos. I'll take just that much. But, well, that's the de, he, that's the article. Uh, uh, and you add the word who, which is a relative, uh, is coming is the erkomenos, and then after me is apiso mu. Apiso is a um, preposition. Um, Literally, if you took this word for word without um, translating it idiomatically, it would be but episodes after. I'm sorry. Uh, but the one coming after me. Episode is after. Episo is a pronoun. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not a pronoun, a preposition. Uh, meaning after. So it it's literally the the but so it's 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 so it's but it's he it's it's but, it's yeah it's the it's ha but so it's but the the, the one, one the one the, but the, the one, after yeah the after coming after me the after and it's pointing to the entire clause. Okay. I mean, uh, the way I'm looking at this, it seems that it's pointing to the entire. The entire clause yeah. following it. The, the article, you mean? Huh? Yeah. 
It's pointing to the entire clause after it. And, well, the, uh, and we the don't clause do that after in English. It is, I mean, we don't really do that in English. It's modifying or describing the one. Well, the after me. <laughs> yeah. The after me. All he's trying yeah. to say is you you can use the article for a whole lot more than just yeah. the. Yeah. I mean, that's been apparent. Yeah. Yeah. This is good. 1026. Sometimes you'll find the article before a prepositional phrase. I mentioned this at 915. Um, mm -hmm. It gives light to all who are in the house. Uh, so choice is to the ones in the house. So I, I have a question about that. Yeah, I get we talked about this in yeah. before, right? Mm -hmm. But I have a question about this. This. this it gives light to all. So which word there means all that? I'm, uh, I'm, lampe, excuse me, lampe is lighten or give, lighten. give light. And the next word is? And you, you have to supply the word pas in. Pa, if That's fine. Or he, lampe or he gives light. Or What's it. pas? Okay, pas in, everyone, every or all. I got it. We just learned that word. Pas in yeah. is all. Yes, and it's in the... Um, light to all. Okay, it's in which case then. Uh, but he's uh, he's talking about accusative. choice with the prepositional phrase ento, ente oikia. Uh, and he likes to use a relative plural. pronoun. Data, so that's data plural to all. Yeah. Light to all. Mm -hmm. Light to all the, the in ones. the house. The ones. Yeah, I'm just yeah. I'm just looking at the literal words. Light to all, light to all in the all to light to all the in the house. Got yeah, it. But use the word ones after the <laughs> the ones. The, the, the I'm just looking at the Greek without putting English in. Okay. I'm trying, I'm all trying right. to transliterate the actual words and understand okay. the, the Greek structure. In my head, I'm trying well, to think Greek. And I thought I was trying to help you. <laughs> well, but no, but I'm, I, the Greek doesn't have all those words. I mean, it, it, it's, it's this article, the in the house, light. Okay. Light right. to all the in the house is the way the Greek are looking at this. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. The article is showing that the following prepositional phrase, ente oikia, is an attributive in an attributive relationship to pasin. It's the same type of relationship that we've seen with adjectives, article noun, article modifier. When we hear the modifier is a prepositional phrase. In order to translate this construction, you'll normally turn the prepositional phrase into a relative clause. That's who are, he added that. Right. Um, and supply whatever words are necessary who are in the house the article will be in the same case number and gender as the word it modifies all right that's enough i think to uh, get us started in translating so uh, the assignment for next week will be to start on the translation and the first part of it uh, is to try to do from memory uh, the case ending chart. This is part of what you're working on, and I'd like to quiz you on that. Um, not next week, but the week after. I'll give you a little more time on that. We'll have a separate quiz for that. So um, what are we doing next week then? Well, next week, we're going to do page one of okay. the workbook for this chapter, okay. which is the case ending chart plus the parsing. Okay. And I, I think I'm going to add the warm up from the second page. Okay. But just that much. All right. Well, I've got a, uh, a very Greek treasure to present to you if you would like. Um, I'll try to do better getting this out next tomorrow, tomorrow morning, at least, instead of waiting half the week. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering what the internet issues if you were able to actually kind of record it. Oh, 
today yeah no it's recording okay. yeah yeah it, it, I, it the problem was not internet it was my login to our okay. to our but you finally found out yeah 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 got yeah. carrie had to log in and do something and then and i'll the, thank yeah. her for us yeah i will <laughs> <laughs> okay permissive passive now i know we haven't studied verbs yet which will get us into um, what's called the voice, active and, excuse me, the mood. No, I'm not, no. No, voice. Voice, you right. Voice. Active voice or passive voice. Um, Greek also has a middle voice, but we're not gonna talk about that here. Not tonight. The passive voice has been referred to as the voice of grace in scripture and with good reason. Many familiar promises are given to us using the passive. For example, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved, shall be saved. Uh, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Although these verses could have been expressed in the active voice, for example, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he will save you. The passive voice emphasizes the fact that we are recipients of God's gracious promises, unable to save or to bless ourselves. Another interesting use of the passive is discussed in Dan Wallace's book, Greek Grammar Beyond the Basics, where he terms it the causative permissive passive. This study focuses on the permissive aspect, though the causative aspect might as easily apply to some of these verses listed below. In the verses, the idea of the permissive passive can be brought out by supplying the phrase let or allow oneself to be. Example, Mark 10, 45. For even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. You see that the first phrase is uh, passive. The second phrase is active. And to give his life a ransom for many. The word diakonethenai is heirs passive infinitive. Yeah, that What's that? Aorist, of course. Yeah. It, it has to be difficult. It has to be aorist. Well, aorist really isn't difficult. Yeah. It's just, I guess, and maybe it, it, it always, if I find something that hangs me up, it's usually aorist. And I that guess is. it's probably because there's no direct English. This yes. is interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm reading ahead. Finish. Yeah. You're reading Finish. ahead? Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm reading what you're writing. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the alternative wording is to allow himself to be served. Uh, suggests that he did not come primarily to be placed in anyone's debt through being served. Although he did occasionally accept the loving ministry of some people, for example, the woman of Luke 7 and Mary of Bethany, who each anointed Jesus with costly perfume, he came primarily to give the ultimate service, the sacrifice of himself on the cross as a ransom for all people. So I, I'm, I'm uh, is, is, would it be okay to ask, ask the question? Sure, ask the question. Okay, I find that really interesting that it would um, be read that way. Um, and that, yeah, and you take it to have that meaning. Um, it, and I'm wondering about, so these other ones you said, so believe in the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. Is this the same voice we're talking about? Uh, it, um, and it's a, um, um active voice or uh yeah all five of those examples at the top that are indented there they are all passive the the so bolded part well, allow is, yourself to be saved no you can't do that for every verse well i just I'm, I'm i'm trying to i'm trying to i'm trying to look back on this and see if i'm understanding so you could render that and allow yourself to be saved? No, no, you no. can't say that. Doctrinally, you can't say that. Uh, we don't have. Uh, well, well, wait a minute. 
<laughs> Which, well, uh, okay, hold, hold I, on. I mean, I'm not you can't, sure. You can't let this idea of the permissive passive prevail in every passive voice no. verse. Well, I this is not a blanket. You form. want to use it. There are some some verses where it's appropriate, and you have to test each one to see if it's uh, against what. Test it well against other scripture for, yeah. for one thing. You've got to use other scripture to interpret it. This is a so possible. You have to be consistent with the remainder. Yeah. Of the Bible. I'm not saying this is the way every. <laughs> okay. Passive... I oh, okay. I hear what you're saying, but just all right. Let's just. You know, take, take, so uh, then uh, should we be then, I mean, okay, if we're looking at this as an academic endeavor and we're questioning how we're translating things and we're providing alternative translations, um, but that's okay for some verses because they fit with what we already know and believe. Yeah, I think that's uh, as much as you can say. Oh, if I'm really serious about trying to play to do this and second guess the translators who have given me the knowledge that I already have about what I believe based on these translations, ought I not then go back to say the Latin Vulgate, which has placed, which was done by Jerome, who knew this language far better than the rest of us now do. He didn't do. know Greek better. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Uh, but no, your, your point is he didn't. because essentially he was nearly a you know, he was many hundreds of years now, a century before okay. us, closer yeah. to the Greek. And part of why he was I shouldn't have said that. I I, 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 I question that Jerome didn't know Koine Greek as yeah. well as any of us. It was closer to being a living language. Yeah. And and we then do we know the Latin? I mean, what is the basis of I mean I this is where we get into the, que the, the, the question of and this, this. This is what makes me get uncomfortable about this discussion is we already know what we believe. And now we're going to go to the Greek and say, well, we can translate the Greek. And in this case, we can do it better than the translators because it fits our already existing do yeah, and, dogma. And but now with this other case, the translator did it right because I agree with his dogma. Yeah, I'm, so I'm sorry, that's not yeah, a good method. In order to make any analysis, you have to make one assumption or another. And now you're going, how do you know which assumption is a more valid assumption? I'm saying the basis of what I already believe is not a good method right, for translating right. the that, Greek. That's your, that's, your, that's your argument that you're making is how do you have confidence that the assumption you make, knowing that you have to make one assumption or another regarding which is more valid, how do you know which of your assumptions I mean, as a starting point I, is the most valid one? This is the point. No, I mean this this is this is a very this is a very deep multifaceted discussion about uh -huh. and why the Catholics have what they call a magisterium because they say that's more valid than people today trying to go back and look at the Greek. What is what is this magisterium? It is the traditions of the church all the way carried through until today. And they look at those who are the bishops in the House of Cardinals as having the best understanding. Yeah, well, and, and so you can't just go to the Bible and go, the Bible says, because then they're going to look at you and go, well, do you mean the Koine Greek or the Latin? And do you speak Koine Greek? Do you speak Latin? Or do you mean your English? Which version? Or, wh or do you want the German? Which Bible are you talking about? And how do you know what those words mean? And this is what the, the this is what the Catholic Church will say. And perhaps they will, but uh, they're um, elevating the. Uh, I'm not arguing their point. Yeah, I know that. What What I'm really trying to say is, I'm. I'm they've made a certain set of assumptions. You've made a certain set of assumptions. You've I'm not making set of assumptions. I made a certain set of assumptions. I'm not here you've to turn, turn over assumptions. reformed theology. I, I I'm very been, I'm very yeah. I'm I'm I, I trust reformed theology based on a, a whole lot of things I'm not gonna outline here. Part of it being we have to trust in those who've gone before us. Right. But that in and we must an assumption. Well, we must trust on some who have gone before us. The very fact that these scriptures are canonized places trust in those who canonized them, which is a well and, which really places trust in God. But we're 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 specifying 
historic historically mm -hmm. where we believe God intervened. And we can describe that. But so you said that I cannot say believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and allow yourself to be saved or let yourself be saved. And you said that's not conforming to our to our uh, well theology. But I'm going to say I don't know that that's necessarily true. There's nothing actually if and you shall be saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. It's, a, it's a, like a yeah. guarantee. Yeah. Believe yeah. on the Lord Jesus and let yourself be saved. Right. I'm not saying that's a, that's not actually I'm not heretical. using that as an example of this permissive passive. No, no, but I, I'm saying that even in if I were to say that and allow yourself to be saved is not heretical. It doesn't make the case as strongly as saying you will be saved, but I, I can't say um, that it's wrong that you believe on the Lord Jesus, and by doing so, you allow yourself to be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus and allow yourself to be saved. Why are you not allowing yourself to be saved? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll these are bring out the, natural languages are not so precise, and this is a lot of the difficulty with and why there's so many things about you know, and and yes, you have to go to all of Scripture, but <clears throat> when if you're going to look at the voice and all this, you have to look at that understanding that voice in all the cases that you mm. think it might be used and ask the question, what would it do to my understanding and let it sit and understand it. We can't just cast it out. What would it say and where would that run into a problem? The, uh, that's all I'm saying. the whole thing may be solved by Carl's first word in the third paragraph. Another. Okay. Which indicates that it, there's more than one yeah, here's the thing. Uh, all Have right. You read enough enough of the English translations to know that they don't agree with each other in every case. No, that's true. Okay, but what's the starting point? The starting point is not the English translation or the Vulgate or the. Uh, well, it's the Greek. The, that's Vul the, the Vulgate is Latin. Yes. But. That's not the source language. No, it's not. And we don't have the original, what they call autographer. No, we have, we, we, have, we have manuscripts. We have early copies. Yeah. And we have enough of them to have confidence that yeah. most of them, there, there are textual variations. But inspiration is the issue that we're really uh, having to deal inspiration with. Of the inspiration, inspiration. No, inspiration. The inspiration of scripture. That it's God breathed. Yeah, it's God breathed. Yes. Okay. Um, we we deal with the scripture the best that we can, and we're cautious about it. Okay. Um, I'm I'm just wondering about the wording. Another interesting use of the passive. Whose use, and well, how are we to know how they used it in one case and another? It's us that's doing the reading. What I'm really trying to get at is. How do you know how God was using it other than to ask him and you get an answer, you think? I, and I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I don't, but as trying to deal with this academically, linguistically, if we're going to ask that question and say it's used in different ways, then we have to be trying to ask the question, who wrote Acts? Well, Mark, John, right? Uh, Luke, Mark Luke, who wrote Acts, we believe. Luke did, yeah. Yeah, well, he's also, the, I think he's the man who's also called Mark, if yeah, I understand this right. About John Mark, he was a different person. John Mark, oh yeah, Luke, it's a different guy, never mind. He wrote Mark. Mark, Luke, who wrote Acts, also, you know, did, what voice was he using there? And how, how was he intending it? And then we go to Mark, and do we then have a reason to think that Mark, that John Mark was using it differently? Is that what we're saying? You have to look at each verse individually in its context. And well, here's where this came from, right. David. Uh, I, in my reading, I came across this um, section in Dan Wallace's book, Greek Grammar right. Beyond the Basic. 
he talks about this causative permissive passive and he gives some illustrations from scripture. He took some different ones, I think, than I did, but there's uh, several cases where this principle of using a, 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 a permissive clause to, uh, to describe this passive voice verb, uh, it does seem to uh, give some some amplified meaning to okay. what's being said. Here's here's some other examples that he gives. Um, Luke seven seven, iatheto uh, mu, let my servant be healed. Well, now that's not a this is third person imperative. That's a different situation. Yeah, I, yeah I'm sorry. I've interrupted uh, your whole thing. I, I present it for what it's worth. If you yeah. if you don't like it, if it's not worth anything to you, then I would be interested in once we get in the room. Hmm? I'm just wondering if it'll make more sense as to when you should interpret a passive voice construction in this way and when you should not, if that will make more sense once we study verbs. Oh, it certainly would. I probably and, presented this in, in the wrong place. Yeah, I'm thinking is maybe we Let's leave point. that until we get right. to verbs. Uh, I'll bring you one uh, next at week. At the moment, it's interesting, but out of context. Yeah, it's, uh, I should have waited until we got verbs before I presented that. All right, we'll leave it there. And since we're out of time, uh, we've got an assignment for next week. Okay. Yeah. No. All right. Uh, would one of you like to close us in prayer? Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for giving us this time together. Thank you for letting as many of us as possible be back together tonight. Thank you, Lord, for Carl, for his dedication, for him taking the time to teach us. Thank you for giving us open minds to look at your word as you gave it to us in the original form and the willingness to, and the dedication to take the time to work through it to really understand. It. None of this would be possible without what you have given us. And so any extent to which we understand it better or more completely is all only due to your power and your grace and just shows your glory and your majesty and for that we praise you as we go out now for this evening the rest of this week please help us lord to do so with humility with thankfulness for what you've given us help us lord to be able to show this to others please help us to make the use of it that you want us to make of it so that it's used to glorify you and not ourselves. Help us, Lord, to be able to take the time to do what we need to do to learn this week. And if it's your will, help us to all come back together safe and well and ready to learn more on Sunday and again in a week from now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, Carl. All right. Oh, this was all on the thing. I'll edit. I guess there's something wrong with our prayer. Well, let's say good. Let's say goodbye. Um, Are you still there? Well, thank you.